Now that you know all of the elements that comprise a UML deployment diagram, let's take a look at a real life use case scenario. So here we have a music request service. And so this service is going to allow users to log in and then build playlists based off of different songs that they want to pick out. Now this is a real world application that I'm currently building out as we speak. And so I thought this would be a nice time to be able to see the deployment diagram that I built. Now I did not build this diagram for the course. I actually built this for the system itself and then realized that be a great example for the course. So uh, just so you're aware, this is something that I took and I directly worked on translating into code. I also took it and showed it to the various stakeholders, the UI UX designer to the other API developer that is working on it with me, the front end developer. And so we're able to leverage the power of being able to visually display this and it allowed us to get a lot done in a very short period of time. This would be a very challenging type of system to write out by hand each one of the requirements, but with a simple type of diagram like this, we're able to do that. So let's start off with the very top left node. Right here, we have a Angular web service. This is gonna be the user interface for the entire system. We can see that it needs to be on some type of dev a device, that's the artifact, and I also added some additional details. So we have an operating, se uh, uh, operating system of Linux, and then we have a component inside that's going to leverage Angular. Now, this has a few different dependencies. It has a dependency on the API itself, which is going to be the back end that manages all of the data and all of the majority of the business logic. And then it also has a dependency on the authentication system. So it's going to connect to two different systems. One is to manage the whole process of logging in and being able to check if a user is registered and if they're allowed to be on the system. The other one is for the back end. And I placed a couple other protocols there or a couple other artifacts that are protocols. And they're going to use a JSON RESTful API. So right there, it tells me a lot about the system. If you were to show this to me and I were to see that you had an Angular front end communicating with a Rails API and then an authentication system, I'd already have some really nice clues on how to build out that system. Now, talking about dependencies, it's really, this is a great example to analyze how dependencies work in software. So right here we have a Angular front end. We've already talked about its dependencies. Now the authentication system, technically this has no set of dependencies. And the reason for that is because of the way dependencies work in general. If you think about it, what dependency really means is that that system would not be able to function properly without whatever it's depending on. The Angular front end, that makes perfect sense for that to have these other dependencies because imagine if you went to it and it had no data and you couldn't log in. It would be completely pointless. It would not be able to function properly. Now the authentication system, on the other hand, does not care about the Angular front end. You could swap it out with the React front end and it would not care in the least. It simply takes in requests and gives responses. It does not depend on those other systems. Now, an in-between kind of system here, an in-between node, is the Rails API. Now, technically, it doesn't care or depend on the front end either. It simply is an API that can take in responses and or takes in requests and then gives responses. However, it does have a dependency to the authentication system. And the reason for that is because sometimes the responses are going to come in and it is going to have to go and communicate with that auth system to make sure that it was a valid request. And so that is a very common pattern you'll see where you'll have a some type of JavaScript front end with a Rails back end and many times in between the two there will be some type of authentication system. 
Now, each one of these nodes is very similar in regards to its structure. It has a set of artifacts, and then it has components inside of those. And then I also wanted to show that you can use notes and comments here to be able to give a little bit more description for the developer. So right here, I simply noted that this is going to use JWT tokens for auth communication. If I hand this off to a Rails developer, this is going to give them a really nice set of instructions on what to go build.